So coming in the next few days, the UK government are releasing their gov.uk app, which is going to allow you to do all of your government servicey stuff eventually. Right now it does about absolutely zero things. But I've been playing around with it in beta and have had it for a while. I also happen to have the code, so I thought we'd do a bit of a deep dive. First off, I'll show you what it's like, the application, and then we'll look at some of the coding implementations and what it's using, what data they're sharing, all that sort of stuff. So let's jump over to the computer. So as you can see here, I've got the Gov UK app. Ignore the name, that's not what it's gonna say, it's gonna say gov.uk. This is just because I'm running a development version of it. And let's jump into it. So when you open it up, it does this very nice animation, which I think is very nice. They've clearly spent a lot of time on that, not on the features that are coming. So anyway, it asks you if you want to share your analytics, blah, 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 blah. They've got these pages that you can swipe through. I think they've done a really good job of this. And then it asks you to sign in to your Gov1 account. So we're going to do that now. Continue. This pulls up what appears to be a link to AWS to something, which then redirects you to accounts.gov.uk. And in this case, it's a staging system. So I'm just going to sign in with my credentials and we'll be back. So I'm now all signed in in the application and it's taken me to this page where I select relevant topics to me. We're just going to go with benefits and business. They're not relevant to me necessarily, but this is to help customize your home screen in the app. But you can skip it if you're not interested, and then we're going to click done. Now it wants to allow notifications. We'll allow the notifications. Obviously, we're in a sandbox environment. Notifications aren't going to work. Okay, so here we are. This is the application. We're in the home screen. And you can see here it's got your topics. You can always edit it this way, blah, blah, blah. It asks you about local information so that you can say what your local council is and stuff like that. Pages you visited. So if you click on one of these links, you'll notice that all it actually does, okay, this one's a bad example, but all it actually does is take you out of the application into the web. That's about it. That's about all this application does is it spits you back out into the web. And it'll log it here in the pages you visited. I'm pretty sure... We're going to be jumping into the code now. But after just looking at the code, that the pages you visited are stored on device and are not stored on the server. Of course, you can delete them and remove them. But yeah, that's kind of it. And then you've got the settings section at the bottom. This is about it. There's nothing else to it. So yeah, let's have a look at some code and how they're actually doing it. What sort of services it's talking to and what sort of data they're sharing. So throughout the entire time we were using the app, I've been um, logging its network connectivity. And well, there are a few things that are interesting. So you'll notice that it's getting all of the services dynamically as a list from an endpoint of API integrations publishing at services.gov.uk. This is also available on GitHub, I believe, the code for this. But essentially, it's just a list of the services and then the relevant topics. So when you go into one, if I find where it went into business, you can see here it's got all the subtopics and a reference. And then down here, it's got URLs of where to take you when you click on them. That's kind of how most of the app works. Most of the contents from the app is pulled dynamically from this API integrations publishing system. Not much of it is hard coded in the app, which is probably a good futuristic way of looking at it. They want to be able to add these new services. However, my argument would be they're not doing any SSL pinning or security verification that the data they're getting back is from their endpoint. So actually you could potentially end up with a man in the middle attack if somebody could do that. Of course, it is SSL, but still, maybe validate the certificate or something like that. What else is going on here? There's logging. They're doing some logging information with one signal to log, I think, guess I'm guessing, based on what you're pressing, what's happening on the device. Okay, so you've got like session count, all that sort of stuff. That's kind of good. That's kind of what we'd expect. I'm not going to click on it, but you can see here we've got the EU West... Um, auth system so clearly they're using aws to handle the authentication directly out of the application my guess is it's the gov auth service if you haven't watched my video about owning a gov.uk domain 
they probably that's probably why because hosting and providing stuff like that is all a pain in the ass for that um but yeah so that's where i'm guessing that happened okay so there is this app info um endpoint which appears to be doing some of the just general housekeeping about the app saying what versions are available if there are any updates uh, what release flags have we got enabled so chat is not currently enabled but clearly that's coming um, local services notification onboarding all that sort of stuff so you can release flag and turn off some of these features as required depending on issues and stuff which i think is a good idea they also appear to be using firebase i'm not what concerned about leaking me tokens because i don't think they're linked to anything they'll be just linked to this development environment but they appear to be doing, using Firebase to do, I'm guessing, crash analytics, all of that sort of stuff. I'm guessing that's where they're saving your APNS token. If, if that is created successfully, that would be my guess what's going on there. Of course, the login window is all just a web view like most of the application is. And that's kind of all of its network traffic. Now we're going to jump over to the app and see kind of how they built it, what's going on there, some of the code. I won't explain it in too much detail, but I thought some of you might be interested. So this is the application. You'll notice our first, it's got some, got a lot of package dependencies. They're clearly depending on a lot of upstream providing information, as well as stuff that they seem to have built in-house, such as GovMobile iOS onboarding screen. But in the production folder, in the production folder, you'll notice there's a lot of code here. Most of the views and the stuff that you're interacting with is written in UI kit. Um, which I think is quite a good idea. I think realistically they might have preferred and it probably would have been easier for them to have built it in Swift UI. I think they could have got that look because it looks kind of Swift UI like. They've done a very good job of the styling and stuff like that. They do have some Swift UI components. However, most of it is in UI kit. Um, they are supporting, if you come over here, they are supporting um, deep links, um, which is normally with the URL of gov.uk I've just changed it to gov.uk1 due to the fact I have the gov.uk app on my phone as well um, this allows you to deep link into the application and will allow you to go to any of the pages so you'll be able to send a link to your friends or whatever I don't know why you can't do that now but say you want to, but say you want to send it to somebody that'll be a feature in the future looking more at some of the code focused stuff they've really broken it out into exactly what everything does and specified it that um, you can see here that you could do gov.uk settings, settings, that would take you, I'm guessing, to the settings page. There's a lot of other stuff here. I don't necessarily see anything interesting. They're just using a lot of Firebase for authentication, a lot of Firebase for a lot of the featurey flags. But a lot of the actual sort of what you click on and what you've looked at and all that sort of stuff is just stored on device. It's not sent to the server. One of the things that I thought was very interesting is how they um, coding the URL. So, you know, I went to staging and stuff. They're putting this in the build phase. So dynamically at build time, it's picking which URLs to go to. And I think that is a clever iron ear. I might have to nick that one. I know it is a feature that is around and should be used and I have used before, but I just thought this was great. So you can see here that the base URLs are app integration, publishing, and then app publishing, stuff like that. They've also got the authentication base URL, authentication client, all of that sort of stuff is just here which I think is a clever way of doing it, which means that dynamically switching between the builds as well as the Signal app ID so that Signal know what app it's all about. I think that's about it for this. I've just kind of shown you a bit around the code, stuff like that. But the app is out. Um, you can download it. There'll probably be a link down there. Um, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.